All right, so today we're going to cover part two of one-step equations. Right. So as you can see here, this is, make this a little bigger, this is part two, right? Part one was adding and subtracting. So as you can guess, part two will be multiplying, oops, multiplying and dividing, right? Multiplying and dividing. So let's review here what are the main ideas of one-step equations, right? So goal, so the goal is to find the balance. So again, you know, let's pretend here that in this scale we have Right, four, five, six, and seven blocks. Right. Well, those seven blocks, those seven purple blocks, weigh more than these four blue box blocks. Excuse me. So we want to know how many blocks do we need to put on this blue scale here for the balance to be equal for these two, for these two scales here to be equally lined up, right? For them to be equal. Well, in this case, it's fairly easy to say, well, you know, we just need three more blue blocks, right? To make them equal, which is correct, right? But in math, sometimes you get a number that's big or the equations aren't that simple to see. And that's where we use, we use math to find those missing blocks, those missing numbers, right? So the goal is to find the missing, what's missing to find the balance, right? Now what's missing is usually called the variable. The missing numbers are called variables. And we use letters. Usually it's X, but you could use any letter in the alphabet, right? To represent a number with a variable. Right? So the uh, the goal, the third star here is get only variables to one side. So only variables to one side of the equation and only numbers on the other side of the equation. So only letters or variables on the one side, only numbers on the other side, right? And finally, we're going to use inverse numbers when moving to the other side of the line of separation. So inverse, again, is a word that we're going to use a lot in math. And like we said in the previous notes, inverse means the opposite, right? It's a fancy word for opposite. So the opposite of addition, right? The inverse of addition is subtraction. The inverse of subtraction, it goes backwards, right, is addition. And the inverse, what we're going to work on today, the inverse of multiplying is dividing. And the inverse of dividing is multiplying, right? So let's remember that, those um, inverses, okay? So let's start here with the first example. So the example says... The example says solve each equation, right? Solve each equation. What that means is find the missing letter, find the missing variable that will bring balance to this equation, right? So we start off with finding the equal sign. Under the equal sign, we draw our line of separation just like that. Okay. And then our goal is to get the variable by itself. 
Where is the variable? Well, in this case, the variable is r, right? r is by itself. So my goal is to bring r down here by itself. So I'm going to write r right there. Equal. So what we remember from before is that when you have a number next to a letter just like this, they're right next to each other and nothing in the middle, it means multiply. So this really means 35 times r, just like that, right? Multiplying. So what I want to do is I want to cross out this 35 just like that. Because remember, my goal is to get this r by itself so I could bring it down. But right now it's not by itself, it's, that, it's with that 35. So I'm gonna cross out that 35 and I'm gonna bring this 35 over to this side, right? Or I'm gonna bring it over across the line over to this side. But when it comes over, it becomes the opposite of multiplying, right? And what is the opposite of multiplying? Exactly, dividing. So we divide by 35, just like that. Okay, and then we have to remember our notes of multiplying and dividing, right? So a negative, a negative divided by a positive, right? There's no number, so it's a positive. A negative divided by a positive is a negative, right? 210 divided by 35, right? This is what we're dividing. 210 divided by 35 is 3. So the answer is, what is it 3? No, it's not 3. 35 times, oh my gosh, I can't, can't think. What's, 30, what's 210 divided by 35? See, even I'm a math teacher and even I forget. I don't know that by heart. 210 divided by 35 is six. My goodness, but that's okay, see? We all need help sometimes, right? And the calculators are here to help us. And that's our solution. And that's what a problem like that is gonna look like in your work, right? So let's do the next example here, which is this one here, right? So again, our goal is to get the variable by itself. But the first thing we do is we find our equal sign and we draw our line of separation. Next, we're going to find our variable, which is P right there. Right? So we want this P to come down right here by itself. So I'm going to draw it over here by itself on this side, see? Because it comes straight down, right? This P is gonna come straight down right there. This P comes straight down right there. So what I'm gonna do is, is I wanna get rid of this eight here. This eight is in the way, is making P not by itself. So what is happening? What is this thing? What does this line mean, right? It means divide, perfect. So I'm going to cross out 8 here. So if I'm dividing on this side, right, when this 8 comes over here, it's going to be the inverse of dividing. So the inverse of dividing by 8 is multiplying by 8, exactly, right? So I'm going to say multiplying by 8, right? Remember, dot means multiply, right? So, I'm going to remember my rules again. A negative times a positive, right? There's no sign here. A negative times a positive is a negative, right? 45 times 8 is 360. Again, use your calculator. That's okay. And those are the two examples from the notes. Again, we're multiplying and dividing, right? Okay, so let's look at four examples from Delta Math, right? So let's see this first example here. 
or delta map, I'm sorry, from the work from worksheet. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite the problem here because here I have the solution, which I'm glad I have. That way I can check to see if I did it right. 30 R, right? So I'm going to, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find my equal sign. I'm going to draw my line of separation here. And I'm going to remember that I want to get R by itself. So I'm going to bring R down here, right? This R, I'm going to bring it down here, straight down, right? So I'm going to say equals R, just like that. So what's happening between this 30 and this R? Remember that a number next to a letter means multiply. So I'm going to remind myself by putting that little dot there. That means multiply. So I'm going to cross out 30 because remember, I want R to be by itself. So since this is multiplying by 30, multiplying by 30, so then when this 30 comes over here to this side, it's going to do the opposite of multiplying, which is exactly dividing. I'm going to divide by 30. And 0 divided by any number is 0, right? No positive, no negative, just plain old 0, right? 0 never has a sign. 0 is not negative or positive, okay? Next, I'm going to do number 3. I'm going to skip number 2 because that one's one of the tougher ones, so I'm going to save that for last, okay? Next, I'm going to do number 3. So again, first thing I'm going to do is rewrite my problem. 3b is equal to 141, right? So again, my goal is to get this v by itself. But first, I'm going to find my equal sign, and I'm going to draw my line of separation. So my goal is to get this v by itself here by bringing it straight down, right? So V equals. So I'm going to remind myself that a number next to a letter means multiply. And I'm going to do that by putting a little dot right there that means times. So when, so I'm going to cross out this three here. So remember when this times three comes over to this side, it's going to become the inverse. So the inverse of times 3, or multiplying by 3, is dividing by 3. Exactly. Okay. So I have a positive. There's no number divided by a positive. That's going to be easy, right? That's positive, so I don't have to write anything down. And 141 divided by 3 is 47. And that's my answer there for number three. Okay, number four, because remember we said we're going to do number two last. So number four here, let's do number four. So again, my first step is going to be, I'm going to rewrite it. Negative 14 is equal to N divided by 33. Right. So... First thing I'm going to do always is I find my equal sign and I draw my line of separation. Right? My variable here is this n. So I want this n to come down here, right? Straight down. My n to come down here. So I'm going to say equals n. Right? Now, remember, what does this line mean again? Right? The line means divide, right? So when I cross out 33, the inverse of dividing by 3 is multiplying by 3. So I'm going to multiply by 33, excuse me, 33. I'm going to multiply by 33. Remember, the dot means multiplication, right? So a negative divided by, uh, divided, no, multiplying. See, I'm confusing myself. Remember, this means multiplying. A negative 
times a positive is a negative. So I'm going to get I'm going to get uh, a negative, and then I'm going to multiply 14 times 33, and that gives me 462. I know it's a big number, but that's okay. You guys have a calculator, right? You guys can use a calculator in your phone, or you can use a calculator online. Just type in calculator, no problem, right? Okay. Finally, let's do this this guy here, which you know what? I made it to be out a bigger deal than what it is. It's not harder. Uh, it's not hard. Yeah, it's a little more complex or complicated than the other ones, but that's okay. That's okay. So again, step one is I'm going to rewrite the problem. All right. Okay. Step two is I find my equal sign once again, and I draw my line of separation. Okay. Step three is I want to get my variable, which is x, by itself by bringing it straight down. Like that. Okay, I bring it straight down, right? So I do equals and I do x, right? It went straight down, see? Now, I remember that this line here means division, right? Divided by. So the opposite of dividing is multiplying. So when this 3 comes over here, it's going to multiply. But look at I'm going to look how I'm going to write it. I'm going to say times 3 just like that. Right? Now remember that that 3 as a fraction is 3 over 1. Right? And we're going to remember that whenever we are multiplying two fractions, we can cross cancel. And what do we see here that's the same? We see this 3 is the same, and we see these 3. This 3 is the same, and they are across from each other. That's why it's called cross-cancel. So this will cancel with that. So I'll be left with 47 on top and 1 on the bottom, right? This 47 was left on the top of the fraction. This 1 was left on the bottom of this fraction, so I write them together here as 47 over 1. And 47 divided by 1 is 47. And that's my answer right there. Okay? So these are some problems that you're going to see in your work. Right? And these are the notes. Okay? There you are.